Hello everyone, back to today's third video, we're doing the ECMDF, Metro France and DWD Long Range Seasonal Update for today's uh, third video. And this is going to take us through the next few months, we're going to look at three tri monthly periods, April, May, June, May, June, July, and then uh, June, July, August. So we're going to finish up uh, with the uh, full summer forecast from these three models um, for uh, summer 2020. So that's what we're doing for our third video, just to say that summer analogues have been released, the third Gabs or whether it's a summer 2020 update is uh, that video is currently on the home page at Gabs Office. will be placed on the summer updates page this evening. And there'll be a written summary going over everything that we discuss in the video um, then. And also, of course, Gabs Office Sunday Roundup has been uh, released as well. That video is also on the home page uh, right now. So um, that's your eclectic mix of this and that for your Sunday afternoon viewing pleasure. Uh, right, so let's get on with it then. We're going to start off with uh, Metro France, so we're going to move on to ECMWF, and then we'll finish off with uh, DWD. We're at the Copernicus website uh, for this, copernicus.eu, so have a look at uh, Copernicus if you'd like to do that. The um, link is on the links page at gazoffice.com and in the description at YouTube, uh, with a video at YouTube. Uh, right then, so we begin with mean sea level pressure anomaly from Metro France for April, May, June. This is the first trimonthly period, the nearest trimonthly period, if you see what I mean. And so this should be the most reliable part of the whole thing. And for sort of uh, late spring, we find that we have this area of above average heights with Metro France mean sea level pressure anomaly sitting over and just to the west of the country. Still lots of below average heights left uh, within the northern latitudes. That's all left over from the polar vortex during the winter, of course. On the face of it, it looks like it should be a relatively anti-cyclonic signal uh, for this late spring period. So you'd expect a reasonable amount of dry weather. Not sure it would necessarily be overly warm. I think the wind direction and jet stream is probably coming in from like a west northwesterly direction so i don't think the temperatures would be necessarily all that exciting but at least it looks like a, a relatively dryish sort of um sort of late spring period uh then move through to the next trimonthly period this one takes us through to uh may june and july and uh this one also quite anticyclonic above average heights again centered uh, to the west of the country, so quite a bit of high pressure in the North Atlantic. We're losing the low pressure in the northern latitudes uh, as well, by the way, now as we're moving in towards the early part of the summer. Again, I'm not sure the temperatures will be terribly exciting. The way that high is positioned, we'd be bringing in a jet stream and the wind from the northwest, I think. So probably relatively cool, if anything, with the temperatures. But again, the main thing that the emphasis is towards higher pressure, so it is drier at least through the spring and into the early summer. And then finally, we uh, get to June, July, August with the mean sea level pressure anomaly for Metro France. And uh, this time, I guess very similar actually, uh, above average heights are still sort of just to the west of us in the Atlantic. A little bit weaker with the above average heights this time. Low, lower pressure is coming back up towards Greenland and Iceland, so probably a re-intensification of the jet stream than the... Um, and low pressure a little bit, so it might be going a bit more unsettled there as we go through the actual summer anomaly itself, June, July, August, and this would imply particularly later in the summer, we could be seeing an indication of something a little bit more unsettled to be developing. But overall, it's not a bad anomaly. We're not, it's, not, it's not like we're stuck under a deep trough of low pressure or anything like that. It's not a bad anomaly. Um, a bit on the cool side again, throughout all of this period, I think we bring the wind in off the Atlantic, so in summer, that actually is not going to deliver particularly exciting temperatures. Uh, this is the temperature anomaly from uh, Metro France for April, May, June for uh, Europe. So uh, for the UK and Ireland, we're actually just about the coolest place in Europe. We're only around half a degree at most above average. Most other areas, though, do have quite a mild time of it, um, around half a degree to one degree above average where we've got these orange shadings, and uh, one to two degrees above average where we've got these red shadings across the far eastern part of Europe. The uh, next temperature anomaly uh, will take us through to April, May and June. So late spring into the beginning of the summer. 
or I should say May, June, July, uh, through to the beginning of the summer. And uh, yes, again, Ireland, UK, only sort of half degree above average, certainly not particularly exciting. Uh, otherwise, most parts of Europe around half degree to one degree above average. Hottest anomalies are on the far eastern side of Europe and into west of Russia, around one to two degrees above average there. These anomalies are a little bit above average in most areas, but not particularly exciting. And then finally, we finish up at June, July, August. Actually, goes a little bit warmer for parts of the uh, UK, particularly England and Wales. We actually go to around half degree to one degree above average. However, you can see about this extreme northwestern area, Ireland, UK, is a little bit cooler, really, compared to most other parts of Europe. Most areas, again, in that half degree to one degree shading. For the Med, looks quite hot there. One to two degrees above average in the med. One to two degrees above average will be pretty hot. And of course, on this eastern and southeastern part of Europe, it is hotter around there too. So overall, warmish temperatures, yes, um, but nothing overly exciting temperature-wise for the UK and for Ireland. Let's look at precipitation. Uh, so precipitation anomalies from Metro France for April, May, June look like that. A lot of no signal going on, as there always is with these charts. Looks a little bit wetter up across Scandinavia. And just hint, anyway, it being a bit drier than average on the western side of Europe and out into the Atlantic. But, of course, it's because we've got that ridge sitting just to the west of the country, protecting us to some degree from the jet stream and from those areas of low pressure off the Atlantic. Drier, actually, for uh, May, June and July. It is a drive and average signal that we got here for Ireland and the UK and parts of France as well. Uh, nowhere particularly wetter than average, just a lot of no signal going on away from that western side of Europe. Again, the high is sitting over just to the west of the country then. And then finally we move through to June, July and August. Uh, full summer 2020 period looks like that. So once again, suggests rather dry conditions on the western south, western side of Europe. High pressure is going to be around here, of course. Uh, nowhere particularly wet, so not a bad summer really overall. I think it's a relatively decent summer that's been signalled here. With the high pressure continuously centred just to the west of the UK and Ireland, not particularly exciting temperatures. Winds will be coming in from a westerly direction. I'd say probably about half a degree off from the model forecast for temperature actually for the western part of Europe. Uh, so probably coming out just quite close to average really with temperatures, but a rather dry summer and overall not too bad. I think that's a signal from Metro France. Let's look at the ECM WF then. Again, we come back to mean sea level pressure anomaly. So this is the ECM uh, mean sea level pressure anomaly for April, May, June. Uh, again, same idea really to Metro France. We've got above average heights to our west, southwest. Below average heights are up to the north. Um, perhaps a little bit weak with the high pressure through this period, but nevertheless, I don't think it's uh, it's too bad for late spring. Uh, then move through to the next tri-monthly period, if we can do that. And uh, it doesn't look like we go through. Yes, we are. There we go. We're April, May, uh, May, June, July, tri-monthly period looking like this. So uh, the exhaust, the exhaust high vent is um, extending from the Atlantic. To our southwest, below average heights up to the north. Again, all looks very westerly. Nothing overly alarming here. Nothing to be too concerned about. Certainly no indication of a washout. There's no northern blocking. There's no trough centred over the top of the country. So it just looks very, very average, this to me. Lots of high pressure out to our west-southwest. Should protect us to some degree from low pressure. Uh, but not particularly exciting with the temperature because all the time that high pressure is out to our west will be bring the wind in from off the Atlantic. That's a cool wind direction in the summer. It's a mild wind direction in the winter, but in the summer, that's quite a coolish uh, wind direction. Now, this is a bit of a difference. It's a bit of a difference. Uh, June, July, August means cell pressure and normally suddenly that high pressure goes. We lose the high pressure. There's a little bit left over towards Newfoundland just there. But otherwise, the high is going. We've got uh, a little bit of low pressure to the north of Scotland. And it may be just implies that, again, this is June, July, August, remember, it does imply perhaps as we get towards the latter stage of the summer, it might be deteriorating, might be starting to turn a bit more unsettled. Uh, but again, nothing to be overly concerned about. It's how temperature anomalies are looking from the ECMWF for April, May, June. So very similar to what Metro France was showing, this far northwestern area, particularly uh, northern and western parts of France, uh, Ireland and the UK, close to average with temperatures there. 
Anywhere further eastwards, generally around a uh, half degree to one degree above average, where we've got these orange shade areas and eastern parts of Europe. That's where the hottest temperature anomalies are, one to two degrees above average. We move through to the next trimonthly period, which of course is going to be uh, May, June, July with the ECMWF. And again, same idea, this northwestern areas like Scandinavia and then down to Ireland, UK, you see there, that's where the coolest temperature anomalies are. Otherwise, with the orange shadings, so again, around half degree, 20 degree above average. Perhaps a little bit cooler with ECM compared to Metro France because there's less red, uh, less red shadings on this eastern side of Europe. Most places around a degree above average, which is a particularly exciting anomaly. And then finally, we get through to June, July, August. Again, this last trimethyl period continues after the previous two. So again, the north, far northwest, Scandinavia, down to Ireland, through to the UK. We've either got no signal or we're just very close to average temperature anomalies. Clearly, that's where the coolest anomalies are this summer. And the rest of Europe is around half a degree to one degree above average in those orange shading areas. So not a particularly exciting summer for temperature. Precipitation um, in terms of uh, ECMWF, more unsettled for this first trimonthly period. This is April, May, June. Certainly the above average precipitation anomalies are rather more extensive across northern parts of Europe. So compared, you know, compared to um, Metro France, which is relatively dry for Western Europe at this point, uh, actually, the ECM is a little bit more unsettled up for Northern Europe. Otherwise, there's lots of no signal going on, lots of white shaded areas. Uh, next trimonthly period is uh, May, June, July, looking like that. So, this is a little bit more uh, similar to what um, Metro France, uh, in comparison to Metro France. So, uh, wet and average in the far north, up towards Scandinavia, but dry and average in parts of England and Wales. Again, the western part of Europe looks a little bit dry and average, really. Uh, and we do have some dry and average areas over towards eastern parts of Europe as well. Otherwise, lots of white, lots of no signal uh, with that one. And then the last trimester period is June, July, August, summer 2020 looks like this. So, uh, again, overall, it looks wettest across the far northern part of uh, Europe, particularly around Scandinavia and Norway, or Sweden and Norway. Uh, Spain and Portugal drive an average, much of Eastern Europe looking drive an average. I just think there are one or two hints here, but as we get through to, to remember the, the previous trimester period, is uh, May, June, July. So that's covering like early summer. This one is June, July, August. So it covers the whole summer and late summer. I think there are just a few hints here. We won't really know it till next month. We confirm it with the time of period for July, August, September. But I think there are just a few hints here that later in the summer, we could be seeing something a little bit more unsettled. And um, then finally got the DWD. So uh, again, this is mean cell pressure anomaly from DWD for April, uh, April, May, June. Uh, low pressure just there. So that's where we tend to have a high pressure of the other two models. But DWD actually has low pressure there in the um, in the Atlantic. Low pressure up here as well. Otherwise, again, lots of white going on. So sort of average mean cell pressure anomalies, um, and not particularly high anyway. Uh, this is mean cell pressure only for uh, May, June, July. So, again, lots of white, very little to go on. There's a little bit of high pressure in the northern Atlantic, possibly trying to get up towards Greenland. Otherwise, again, very little uh, to go on with the DWD there. And then finally, we get through to June, July, August. Summer 2020 has, again, some above average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. Quite a long way away from us, so and going towards green. Otherwise, nothing else is going on. I would suspect there may be a bit of a trough in the 500 millibar flow here, but uh, but there's nothing really, um, nothing to suggest. There are no blue colours, so there's no uh, notable trough, just my interpretation of where that ridge is in the North Atlantic. Uh, we may get a corresponding trough somewhere around here and a dip in the jet stream. But again, there's nothing really to... to um, Suggest that, that's just my interpretation. Uh, temperature anomalies from DWD uh, for April, May, June. So this one, actually a little bit warmer for the UK and Ireland. We have got that half degree to one degree uh, shade orange shading into the UK there. Most parts of Europe, again, around half degree to one degree above average. Just warmer for in northeastern parts of Europe. Uh, there we one to two degrees above average and in the southeastern corner as well. Overall, a little bit warmer for most areas compared to the other two models uh, for April, May, June. 
particularly compared to the ECM. Then we go through to May, June, July, and um, similar to what the other two models are showing, Ireland and the UK, very close to average, really, in those yellow to white shaded areas. Otherwise, most other parts of Europe are around half degree to one degree above average, so a little bit above average, but not overly exciting, certainly not that hot. And then finally, we move through to June, July, August, summer 2020. Actually, then finishes up um, looking ra rather cool. We've got current average temperature on it's just out west of Ireland. Ireland and the UK have no signal. And uh, it just looks like that could be a little bit colder than average, actually, a little bit cooler than average for the summer to me. Uh, and other areas of Europe, so the southeastern part of Europe, looks quite hot, 1 to 2 degrees above average. Baltic sea areas, around 1 to, one to 2 degrees above average. Central Spain degrees above average otherwise again we've got those yellow, those orange and yellow shaded areas indicating not particularly exciting temperature anomalies finally precipitation uh from dwd for april may june looks pretty unsettled for northern parts of europe driving average across southern europe uh the next time otherwise lots of white and no signal going on the next tri-monthly period it takes us through to may june july um, that seems to be a bit more unsettled close to the UK. I mean, it's a very weak signal, but those sort of green splodges, um, if you like, they could be indicating something a little bit more unsettled to the far northwest of Europe compared to what the other two, is show other two models are showing in this early summer period. Again, looks relatively dry down across southern parts of Europe. And then finally, we finish up at June, July and August summer 2020 to me that hints at a relatively unsettled summer i have to say i mean it's not an overly dramatic signal but certainly for northern europe it looks as though if anything we're possibly a little bit on the uh wetter than average side southern europe looks drier than average so most of the med looks okay uh, so, assuming things improve with um, coronavirus, it does suggest that anybody going on holiday in the summer, if they're able to, to the bed, could be okay there. But Northern Europe does look quite unsettled, I have to say. There's a lot of low pressure. Uh, not a lot of low pressure, seen by the mean cell pressure anomaly, but the overall anomaly suggests that lower pressure could be... You know, it's very difficult because there is no real trough of low pressure with the DWD in or over northern Europe through those three trimonthly periods. But when you drill down to detail, the temperature don't look that exciting and the precipitation, if anything, looks like it's on the wetter side. So there's no notable trough of low pressure within the mean sea of a pressure anomaly. But just also a lower, lower pressure, let's say, lower pressure could be more um, impactful than higher pressure this summer. Overall, a little bit disappointing, I think, for the summer anomalies. But, of course, that's a long way off. We're only in March, so there's going to be two more of these updates in April and May before we get to summer. And there is time for improvements there. Otherwise, the earlier periods... Um, just very average, I think, really. But Dito is probably a most unsettled out of the two. The other two, particularly Metro France, does suggest could be a reasonable amount of dry weather through the latter part of the spring and at least into the early summer. And I would suspect that's what's most likely going on here with these uh, with these three models. That the overall consensus is probably for things to be relatively dry um, late spring, perhaps lasting into early summer, and then going a little bit downhill later on. Uh, right, it's only a snapshot of what these models are showing this month. They could all look very, very different next month, of course. So don't be overly concerned about the summer at this stage. And, uh, of course, we'll do it all over again next month. And next month, we will uh, know a little bit more, I think, uh, about the summer. And we'll also begin to extend towards late summer as well. The, the final trimester period next month will be um, July, August, September. Right, that's it uh, for this month's ECM Metro France DWD long range update. Don't forget to check out those summer analogues and um, Gav's up his sunny roundup. Both of those videos are on the homepage, and the uh, third summer 2020 update will be placed on the summer updates page this evening and there'll be a written summary where you can have a read and uh, see um, see what we said in the video if you haven't had time to watch the video in one go. Right, that's all for now though and thanks for watching.